Welcome to the Pickford Classic Movie. My name is Michael Falter, Program Director at Pickford Film Center. And I'm Kavi Ascari. I teach film history at Western Washington University. Uh, today's film, a uh, really interesting uh, post-apocalyptic movie. Uh, Vincent Price stars uh, as the last man on Earth. Uh, he, you know, some sort of mysterious plague has has, has wiped out uh, all of the, the the human population and and turned them into some sort of hybrid zombie vampire creature. And Vincent Price is, uh, you know, sort of fighting them uh, throughout uh, the course of the movie. An interesting production. Um, it's a it's a film that was it was shot on location in Rome. Uh, of all places, I think uh, probably just because it was cheaper to right. shoot uh, at the studios there, um, with uh, co-directors, an American director and an Italian director, and they sort of collaborated on on the uh, production of the film. But I think Vincent Price is really the star of the. Yeah, of maybe the, maybe we could call it a spaghetti zombie movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vincent Price is definitely the main uh, the main star. Oh, well, really, he's the only star at this point. He's the last man on earth. And of course, uh, Vincent has had a long career at this point in playing up sort of the uh, uh, the common man in uh, in very uncommon circumstances. Uh, a lot of times in the horror genre, even though he'd gotten his start in Laura and some of the some really great dramas in the '40s. But by the time 1950, The Fly, he pretty much the bread and butter was the horror genre. And uh, we did House on Haunted Hill, which would be shot I think uh, 1959 was. So this is about mm -hmm. five years after that. You know, very popular actor, very popular, but very popular within that genre. So people would have expected at this point, you know, some kind of thriller slash horror film. And I think they really deliver. Right. And, you know, it, it is a little bit uh, of, of a scary film. We don't do a lot of these. Uh, and so we should say uh, to, to viewers that you might want, because it is a vampire movie, you might want to go out and, and get some garlic. And we, we actually have uh, here for our show a special projector bulb uh, that, uh, that's protecting us. Uh, so you might want to go during the commercial break, get yours, and, uh, and then enjoy uh, The Last Man on Earth. Another day to live through. Better get started. December 1965. Is that all it has been since I inherited the world? Only three years. It seems like a hundred million.
more of them for the pit. Every day there are more of them. They live off the weak ones and leave them for the pit. KOKW calling. Come in. KOKW calling. I'm on international frequency. Come in. Pleasurable. Now it bores me. Just fuel for survival. I'll settle for coffee and orange juice this morning. But first, there's my life transitor. I'd better replace that garlic. I'll need more, lots more. Better stop off and get them. I can't afford the luxury of anger. Anger can make me vulnerable. It can destroy my reason, and reason's the only advantage I have over them. I've got to find where they hide during the day. Uncover every one of them. Now, where did I finish off yesterday? Madison Street to 31st Avenue. Eleven kills. Over three years. And there's more than half the city I haven't searched. flesh apart so their body seal can't function. And how many more of these will I have to make before they're all destroyed? They want my blood, if their lives are mine. And I still get squeamish. Wait, that garlic. I'd better put it back where it belongs. I can't live a heartbeat away from hell and forget it.
one more stop I'll have to make. I can get rid of them later. Right now, I'm out of gas. Still fresh, but I'll take only what I need. They've got to last. I've got my life to worry about. Those mirrors have to be replaced before dark.
square blocks to search. How many of them still exist? How long will I have to keep up this search? time left. It'll be dark in an hour. before the sun will rise and drive them back to darkness. Another day, another day to start all over again.
Birch. Birch. God, how I miss you. Welcome back to The Last Man on Earth, starring Vincent Price. And, uh, you know, this, this has, the source material for this is a book called I Am Legend by uh, Richard Matheson. And mm -hmm. if you looked at the opening credits, you'd see, uh, I think, a man named Logan, which is his sort of uh, pseudonym for this film. And, of course, I Am Legend has been made several times. The Omega Man with mm -hmm. uh, Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston, yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, the Will Smith, uh, the most recent version. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had done a number of other films. Uh, Stir of Echoes was made into a film. Um, what Dreams May Come was made into a film with uh, yeah. with uh, Robin Williams. So he's and a even very a Twilight Zone episode called Last Man on Earth. Oh yeah, yeah. and uh, in fact, and he'd written a number of La uh, Twilight Zone episodes. So he was a very prolific author, um, and often worked within this sort of interesting genre of horror, almost science fiction, and you know, mm -hmm. I it's it's a it's a great story. Yeah, I, I think, you know, and all the other adaptations you mentioned, they definitely make it more of a vampire story. And we still have, you know, these these va zombie vampire creatures are uh, are affected by garlic and mirrors and, and those kinds of things. Uh, but they're also, you know, very much zombies. You Absolutely, know, there yeah. are these sort of bumbling hordes that, that can't figure out their, how to get into Vincent Price's house, you know. <laughs> uh, and and clearly an inspiration for the, for the modern, uh, you know, zombie movie. I mean, there are a lot of zombie films before this, um, you know, like I Walked with a Zombie by Jacques Turner in 1943, uh, White Zombie in the early 30s, but they were more about sort of voodoo ritual and, and, uh, and you know, a, a, oftentimes a single zombie character who is the kind of big uh, scary character. But this sort of zombie as horde thing um, is oftentimes attributed to George Romero with Night of the Living Dead uh, and, uh, you know, the, in 68. And Romero says, uh, he admits to having ripped off Matheson's novel, right. but he doesn't admit to having ripped <laughs> off this film. And I think when you watch this film and you watch this sort of zombie vampire creatures in this film and then watch Romero's film in 68, you would have to say, yes, he does, in fact, get a lot of ideas uh, from, from this one. Absolutely. And you can see more of those ideas in the next act of The Last Man on Earth. <laughs> The sun's already set. They'll be everywhere.
Verge, Verge. Yes? Oh, no. My makeup. My hair. <laughs> hey, where is everybody? All I can see Hi, is... Hi, Ben. Oh. I can hear children, but I can't see any children. Uncle Ben! Uncle Ben! Hey, look at how I'm crazy. Ben, Uncle Ben! Ben, Uncle Ben! <laughs> Open them and see. Open them and Ooh. see. Come, come. Take a look at this. It's highly theoretical, Ben. Theoretical? Do I have to remind you that theory is a beginning of solution? Is Europe's disease carried on the wind? Is it, Ben? Could be. And if it is? It isn't, Verge. Is that what you really think, or just what you'd like to think? I, I cannot accept half-baked theories that sell newspapers. I'm, I'm a scientist, not an alarmist. You're whistling past the graveyard. Is that a commentary on my work at the lab? We both know how hard you've worked. I'm sorry, Ben. I just can't accept the idea of universal disease. Uncle Ben, you promised your cartridge. All right, Kathy. Who can resist that face? <laughs> All right. Card tricks. Card tricks. Robert, is it possible this germ or virus could be airborne? Anything is possible, Verge. The best brains in the world have been running through this thing with a fine-tooth comb. The germ is visible under a microscope, but it's not like any bacilli ever known. In what way? It can't be destroyed by any process we've been able to uncover. But with the whole world trying, there must be a solution. Hey, Mommy! When are you going to cut the cake? <laughs> right now, our problem is to cut that cake. <laughs> hey, Mommy! Hey, Mommy! Coming! Coming!
wind wake you up? It always does. How do you feel? I'm all right. Oh, don't get up, honey. I'm not sick, Bob. I'll make you You don't breakfast. have to. I'll be all right. Go on and read your paper. All right. Oh, sweetheart, look, if you don't feel well, please go back to bed. I'm just a little tired, that's all. I wish somebody would find a vaccine. It's all we're working on at the lab, Verge. Maybe you better not send her to school today. All right. You... You think you should go to work? I have to. Oh, Bob. Bob. I'm so... Frightened. Everything's going to be all right, sweetheart. Well? The bacilli are multiplying. That kicks the bone marrow theory in the head. This specimen shows a higher white count than when I put it on the slide. Those cells are still living, Dr. Mercer, off one another. There has to be an answer. You heard that all communications are ended outside the continental limits? Yes, I heard. That leaves it in our laps. So we keep trying. Where's Cortman? Well, he should be here by now. You two stay on this virus theory until I decide it's exhausted. Right. Yes, sir? Morgan will fill you in. All right, sir. And what did the great man of science have to say today? More of the usual? Oh, he's trying, Ben, just like the rest of us. And nothing works. The streets are swarming with truckloads of bodies that they're throwing into that god-awful pit. And the dedicated Dr. Mercer goes on with his plodding, unimaginative approach. You have a better idea? Maybe. At least it involves imagination. Ben, it's as simple as this. An unknown germ is being blown around the world. It's highly contagious and it's reached plague proportions. And you don't believe some of the dead have come back? Well, let's get to work. And why are they burning the bodies? Why don't they bury them? Because it's the best known way to control the contagion, to keep the germ from spreading. That's what we've always believed at any rate. You'd prefer us to believe in vampires? If they exist, yes. There are stories being told, Bob. By people who are out of their minds with fear. Maybe. But there are too many to be just coincidental. Stories about people who have died and, and have come back. They're stories, Ben, stories. And why are the infected people always so tired in the daytime? Why can't they stand the sunlight? Why are they only seen at night? Come here. Look. I know it's dusk. Now, is this bacilli or isn't it? It doesn't alter. And this bacilli is found in the blood of every infected person, or isn't it? To show me germs is not to refute these stories, Bob. Point is, if there are vampires, they exist in spite of these germs. Come on, let's get to work. And until further notice, this station will continue its around-the-clock coverage of this national disaster. And now, 
we switch you to the state capitol where His Excellency, the Governor, is speaking from the Executive Mansion. Further, I have, in conjunction with the federal government, declared this state to be a disaster area. The public health is dependent on bodies of the deceased being burned. You must notify the health department immediately if you have a plague victim in your home. Under no circumstances should you gather publicly. In view of the dire emergency that exists, I intend to... Anything new? Huh? No, nothing new. Oh. Nothing. Mommy, where are you? Mommy, I can't see. going to call the doctor. I said no. Verge, there's nothing they can do. But we can't just let her lie there. Well, this way she has a chance. If you call a doctor, he'll report it. Do you want that? Mommy, help me. Mommy. Mommy, please help me. Mommy, help me. How can you be so sure she... Blindness is one of the symptoms. You're not to call a doctor under any circumstances. No one is to come into this house. Now remember that. Mommy. Mommy. Mommy, where are you? I've got to pick Ben Cortman up on the way to the... The lab. No one is to come into this house. Now remember that. Who's there? It's me, Ben. We're late. Ben, what's the matter with you? Nothing, and I'm going to keep it that way. Ben, look, let's talk about this. There's nothing to talk about. You think I'm out of my mind. You laughed at me in my theory. You might be one of them. Ben, look, you're ill. You ought to see a doctor. No, doctors. You take care of your life, I'll take care of mine. Now, get away from here. You understand? Get away from here!
If you're looking for anybody but me, forget it. Are they all gone? That's right. Is there any hope from the latest reports? No, not yet. But believe me, Morgan, we'll find an answer. When, Doctor? We need it right now. I need it. You're the only one who wasn't afraid to come here today. What's going to happen, Dr. Mercer? Is everybody in the world going to die before someone finds the answer? No, I don't think so. I don't deny there's some strange evolutionary process going on, but mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. When? I called the doctor. I had to. I told you not to call anyone. Mom, she was blind. She couldn't see. She kept reaching out her hands, groping for me. And then, all of a sudden, she was gone. And they came and I, I tried to stop them. They took her. I saw a truck out there. Was that it? Was it? <laughs> I'm sorry, lady. There's nothing I can do. Let that truck through. Get out of the way. Get back, folks. Nobody's allowed out there. Please, all of you, get behind those lines. Look sharp there. Move. Move along. Make way for that truck. Make way. Hey, you, mister. Come back. Come back. Did this truck just come in from Market Street? I said, did this truck just come in from Market Street? Mister, I don't know. Hey, you don't belong in here. Get out. I said, get out. I want my daughter. Mister, a lot of daughters are in there, including my own.
birds. Oh. <laughs> no. I won't let them put you there, Virg. I promise. I won't let them put you there. Who is it? Who's there? Kill you, Morgan. Morgan, Are you hear? Morgan. Morgan. Do you hear, Morgan? Morgan. Do you hear, Morgan?
If Cortman thinks he can get to me by destroying my car, his wits are getting dull. This convertible would be nice. Probably handles well. But I can't think of comfort. There was a time when I shopped for a car. Now I'm looking for a hearse. This station wagon will have to do. Search every street, every house, every alley, every inch of this town. I've got to find it. Someone else is alive in this world. But where are they? Where are they hiding? How many are there? Where did they come from? Why haven't I seen them? This is Robert Morgan. If somebody can hear me, answer me. For God's sake, answer me. This is KOKW calling. KOKW calling. Answer me. Finally decided to come back. It's all right, boy. Good boy. Oh, no. Don't worry, boy. You're going to be all right. Yes, you Now we 
I've got you all cleaned up. Hmm? <laughs> You're going to feel better. I'm going to put you down here now, and you can rest. Hmm? Got you all cleaned up. There you go. Rest. You know they're out there, don't you? You poor, driven thing. Everything's gonna be all right. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Everything's gonna be all right. All right. You're going to get better. We're gonna have lots of happy times together. You'll see, everything's going to be fine. Welcome back. Uh, we've just finished watching the second act of Last Man on Earth, and you know I think there's a real contrast here between the the, the beginning uh, and uh, and this this middle part of the film that we've we've just uh, seen. And I, I have to say the first act is my absolute favorite part of of uh, you know uh, it's in the top ten of, of all of my sci-fi uh, wow. you know uh, you know viewing experiences just because uh, you know he's he's the last man on earth he's he's completely isolated or he thinks he's completely isolated and uh, you know he's sort of on this mission and this catastrophic thing has happened and there are these people constantly or these undead vampires constantly trying to kill him uh, and yet all we get is this sort of mundane everyday life you know right. all we get is him sort of figuring out how to get his food making sure his garlic stores are replenished you know sort of bored when he stakes the vampires all right. day long and then goes back to his house and kind of sips tea and yawns while they they <laughs> uh, slam on uh, you know two by fours uh, on the side of his house and scream Morgan we're going to kill you <laughs> you know and, and it's just that kind of combination of the complete sort of boring mundane life uh, and uh, this really catastrophic event that I think sort of makes his isolation so creepy and so effective and it's something that's picked up in in the later adaptations to the one with Charlton Heston and the one with Will Smith right and you know be be careful what you wish for I mean I think maybe the the isolationist lifestyle might have suited him more effectively you know <laughs> in fact and it was quite attractive to me too I was like wow you can like you can go pick out whatever car you want and, right you know got a gas tanker stalled on the side of the road you're all good uh -huh. um, but you know he he really is isolated, and you know we see, and this is this is something, I don't know what it is about dogs, but they seem to de deliver you know, deliver mm -hmm. bad news usually, uh, in horror films. I, I was thinking of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers when I saw this, you know the, the earlier version, and then especially the 1978 version with the uh, half dog, half man mm -hmm. uh, beast. Um, so you you kind of know that you know the black poodle here is uh, you know. Might be, might not be all dog, <laughs> <laughs> right? And 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 certainly doesn't cure his problem of of being alone. Um, but that will be solved by the end of the next act. So please enjoy.
weight, I'm not gonna hurt you. Can't you understand? Wait! Wait. I'm not going to hurt you. Wait. 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 I couldn't be out here in the daylight if I was one of them. You know that they can't come out until sundown. Do you want to come with me or do you want to face them? Feeling better? Yes. Would you like a cup of coffee? Thank you. You seem very well organized here. Yeah. My name is Ruth Collins. I was married. I lost my husband. You are alone. You were married. Yes. Children. A daughter. What are you doing? Please stop, please. Stop it, please. You're making me sick. Why do you turn please. away? Please. Why do you turn away? <laughs> You think I'm one of them? You will be. You've made up your mind just because I... You can't change the facts by talking. Facts? What facts? That I got sick? I've had a sensitive stomach all my life. I saw my husband killed, torn to pieces right in front of our house. I've been wandering ever since, hiding at night, not eating more than scraps. Sick with mourning, sick with fear, unable to sleep. Then you shout at me. You chased me across a field, hit me, drag me to this house. And to top it all, when I get sick because you shove a piece of reeking garlic in my face, you tell me I'm infected. Where are Let you me going? Go. You can't go out there. It's almost sunset. Let me go, you can't I said. go out there. Now in a few I minutes don't the care. streets will be full Let of. Me go. And please, I don't care. let me give you a blood test. Don't touch me. 
Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You must be hungry. I'll fix you some dinner. Should eat. I can't. You seem used to them. Oh, as much as anybody could be. I'm not frightened of them anymore, if that's what you mean. Oh, I protect myself against them, but only because there's so many. Individually, they're weak, mentally incompetent, like animals after a long famine. If they weren't, they surely would have found a way of breaking in here a long time ago. Come out, Morgan! Hear that? That's Ben Cortman. He was my friend. Your friend? He was like a kid brother. If I could find him and destroy him, but you said he was your friend. When I find him, I'll drive a stake through him, just like all the others. But you lived through all this. Do you know why? Perhaps I was chosen. Hmm. That's a laugh. Or perhaps it's because a long time ago, when I worked in Panama, I was bitten in my sleep by a bat. My theory is that the, the bat had previously acquired the vampire germ. By the time it entered my blood, it had been strained and weakened by the bat system. As a result, I have immunity. Well, it's only a guess, but it's all I have to go on. You don't think that I'm immune, do you? It's a simple matter to find out whether you are or not. What will you do if I am infected? Cure me? You don't have to answer. I know as well as you do. It's incurable. There might be a way. If not of killing the germ, at least of containing it, keeping it from spreading. If I had the equipment, the time. But you don't. Injection, I'll be one again. What do you mean? You found a solution? That's right. Exactly as you said it could be. I take that for it. What is it? Defibrinated blood plus vaccine. The blood feeds the germ. The vaccine keeps it isolated and prevents it from multiplying. We've had it for some time now. We? We? There are quite a number of us. And I thought you were alone. I was going to cure you. Does that amuse you? No. Now, I want the truth. I want all of it. Why are you here? 
to find out if you know any more than we do. You know far less. We're alive. Infected, yes, but alive. We're going to reorganize society. Do away with all those wretched creatures who are neither alive nor dead. Start everything all over again. And you want me to join? You can't join us. You're a monster to them. Why do you think I ran when I saw you? Even though I was assigned to spy on you. Because I was so terrified of what I'd heard about you. You're a legend in the city. Moving by day instead of night. Leaving as evidence of your existence bloodless corpses. Many of the people you destroyed were still alive. Many of them were loved ones of the people in my group. I didn't know. Is there any way you can get out of here? What do you mean? They're coming after you tonight. That's why I was sent here. To prevent you from resisting them. And supposed to keep you here. Until they come. To kill me? Yes. Your new society sounds charming. The beginning of any society is never charming or gentle. And you pretended to be shocked at my violence. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you go on and use it? Get it over with. Use it. Get it over with. <laughs> now you know. What are you going to do? you doing? It's already done. What? Look. Look. You see? It worked, Ruth. The antibodies in my blood worked. My blood has saved you, Ruth. Do you know what this means? You and I can save all the others. We won't be alone. We'll never be alone again. You are sure? Wait. Don't be afraid. Where are you going? 
out of here. Tell them you're not a threat to us. You can't go out there. You can you save all of us. get ten feet. When they come here, there won't be time for questions and answers. They'll come to kill. For God's sake, Robert, let me go. Oh, Robert, please. Ruth, look. Tomorrow. Please. Oh, Robert. Tomorrow, Ruth. Tomorrow will no. be all right. Robert, no. Yes, Ruth. But if this doesn't last... But it will. I've already checked it under the microscope. Wait, I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. I'll check it again.
Don't cry. There's nothing to cry about. We're all safe now. All safe. back you've just finished watching the last man on earth uh, I, I think that ending is is really a, a terrific one and, and one that um, is one of the closest uh, adaptations of, of the novel itself. I think one of the, the most interesting things about the novel is that there's this irony at the end uh, where uh, the, the last man character, um, he, he realizes that he's in fact the vampire. He thinks he's hunting vampires, right. but, but he becomes the legend of this sort of this shadowy killer creature who comes while you're sleeping, and he's the menace on the new, the new society that's formed. And there's actually some subtle references throughout the film uh, about this being an evolution, not not just a plague. Right. You know, there's a sort of brief reference to evolution. Uh, so you know, this film it, it it doesn't completely give that sense, but it, it at least it hints at that. And then she talks about him becoming the legend, which in the Charlton Heston version um, it goes away, comes back a little bit in the uh, the the Will Smith uh, version, uh, but but here probably the the, the best adaptation. And, and I have and I love the ending in the church too. And maybe it's a part of this film being shot. In, right. on location in Rome, but it has this sort of crucifixion parody, uh, you know, uh, moment when he's sort of impaled on the altar right. uh, at the church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a great scene. And, you know, you mentioned the Omega Man, and, uh, and we were watching it just to, to review it, and I forgot, forgot how much fun that is to see Charlton mm -hmm. Heston, um, perhaps not with his shirt off, that part was a little bit disturbing, but, you know, for the rest of the film, <laughs> it's got this great 70s soundtrack. <laughs> And uh, you know, it's it's actually just a lot of fun. Not yeah. not quite as uh, uh, close to the novel, but uh, I don't know. Right. What's your recommendation? It has it has real style. Let's just go with that as yeah. the recommendation. And from that opening shot where he's he's uh, so. It, it, he's in heaven in his red convertible cruising through the empty streets of downtown Los Angeles. You know it's going to be an interesting movie. It must have felt fun to be in Vincent Price's shoes for that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this week's Pick for Classic movie. We will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>